in the beginning, throughout the ages of man, there has been a plague that consumes all who touch it, sucking the souls from its victims, reducing their creativity to dust in the wind. I'm talking, of course, about the sample browser. But here in 2022, a new hero emerges. From the vast, the boundless cosmos. I'm excited by something so boring right now. So I've been using FL Studio since about 07 and Logic Pro for the last nearly 10 years. Both have something in common in that the sample browser can suck the entire life out of a music project when you just want to find something quickly. For example, in the most recent update of Logic Pro, you can't search for something like F sharp because the hashtag option's broken. I can search for F, but I can search for F sharp minor, but I can't search for F sharp and that's bloody irritating. This video isn't sponsored by Waves in any way. They did send me Cosmos ahead of time because while well, I've worked with Waves in the past, the Cosmos not only fixes those minor quibbles, but about 462 million other issues with sample browsing that I also have. Let me show you some of the ridiculous features you can get away with in Cosmos that you just can't do with a regular browser. For example, samples aren't named properly like this guy right here. Well, now it's been identified as kick, hip hop, electronic, hit and dry. I never would have found it as hashtag 5B, hashtag one. I don't know why it's named like that. It's been pulled from a library. But Cosmos has managed to figure that out and identify that. So all these kind of weird samples that haven't been named properly have now got some kind of identifier to go with them. So we can search for samples that don't even have data with them. Now here's where it starts to get really fancy using the neural engine to figure certain things out. Let's say I've had an idea for a hip hop track and I want to find some soul sampled off a of vinyl that contains a vocal. I'd have to remember what sample pack it's in, when I sampled it, where I got it from. Watch this. Up at the top, if I use the search option, let's go soul. So first off, all right, it's finding everything with the word soul in it, but also maybe stuff that hasn't as well, right? Like this, for example. Yeah, all right, pretty soulful drums, right? It's not exactly what we were after though, so let's make sure it's also got some vocals in it. So let's use the search again. Let's go VOC, and we're gonna add vocal to it. So now it's looking for soul that contains vocals. Let's see what we got. Now there's no way it could have known that from the sample name look, but it's figured out it's got a soul vibe and it contains vocals. Right, let's take it one step further and see if it can figure out stuff that's been cut off vinyl. We can filter things down via their BPM and their key as well, and also their relative key. Over here where it says key and BPM, let's say I'm working in 88, right? I can stick it in 88 like so. It gives me a point up and down from the 88 BPM. Let's tie it right in. We can only go two or three BPM off. And let's say my track is in F major, but I also want anything that's the relative key of F major, right? Which is D minor. And there we go. So we've now got anything that might fit into that space. So now let's again say we want it to have piano tone in it. Now that one's named piano, but this one's not. And yet it's figured out it's piano tone. Like it's completely changing the way that I look for samples on my hard drive. They're not named as such. I might put in piano, looking for piano, and I'd miss out on all of these sounds. Now, the other thing it does that's really special is the way you're able to browse one shot. Over here, we've got three view options. The very far right one is the Cosmos itself. We can see we've got the Cosmos in front of me. Now, our mouse wheel lets us zoom in and out, and each one of these dots is a one shot on my machine. At the minute, it's done via brightness, meaning Gonna have kicks and bass over here. High shakery type things up over here. However, we can flip it over to say instrument and it organizes them out instrument wise. So like, 
hats and cymbals up here, kick drums over here, snares around here. Let's say I want this kick here, and I can just drag it and drop it into my project. Go find myself a snare to go with it. And I want some kind of hi-hat. I know they're all up here. Perfect. All right, so now I want a sample to throw in here that's at 120 BPM, just for an example. Jump back into my browser here, key in BPM. Complicated. I and never let's drop that in. And just like that, we're off and flying. Now there is one thing I'd really like to note, if you're a degenerate like me, you'll install this and you'll just point it at your main sample drive. Cosmos has to analyze every single file that comes across to figure out things like the ones that aren't named properly, are they a kick, etc., etc. Pointing it at 160 million samples was a terrible idea. So what I would advise doing, if you look at the browsers on the left hand side here, you can choose individual files and folders and you can switch those off and turn them on. Um, overall though, it's a completely free tool and it is changing the way that I look at my sample library. I actually get inspired when going for samples rather than thinking like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna use the same kick because I know where it's stored. You can actually start looking for things that are sampled off a of vinyl when it's found the key, it's telling me the relative key, it knows the BPM. It's made life so much easier. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.